It's round four of the Champ Car iRacing series, and in a fan and driver voted selection, we're at Silverstone Circuit in the UK for today's one hour race in the Toyota GR86. It was the car used in the opening round of the championship, and it's back. Great racing that it can create, especially around a high speed circuit like this. And it also has rain tires, so there is a chance of weather in the area, which I've never been, but I'm led to believe is typical of most days of the year in the United Kingdom. There's your look at the weather, at the sky, at the wind, and 3.6 miles of uh, world famous raceway, best known for Formula One cars, no doubt. In the 60 minute race coming up, Every driver is going to have to make a pit stop to add fuel. What they do around tyre strategy when they pit, it's a very broad window with lots and lots of options. And Devon Peters joins me for HJBC coverage. I'm David Haynes. They are driving for some great prizes as well as all of the the learning the muscle memory that sim racing can give our champ car i racing competitors that's right uh the overall championship winner will win the big prize of two thousand champ bucks that they could put together uh for a ride of uh their choice in the champ car i racing series we also have uh some random prize drops for folks that just show up uh, maybe don't quite have all the speed yet that's three 250 dollar draws occurring in uh or after rounds one to four rounds five to eight and rounds nine to twelve and this is round four and then, of course, we also have the Endurance Series running this year. And so uh, there are four Endurance rounds, um, each one featuring a $200 Champ Buck race prize and another $200 Champ Buck prize for the winner. So tons of ways to race, tons of ways to win some bucks, and uh, you know, tons of ways to have some fun out there on the track with your Champ Car buddies. Indeed, forum.champcar.org and the iRacing section is right up the top. The drivers are qualifying now before the one hour race. It's a relatively compact qualifying session, but there are plenty of drivers out there. We pick up Alex Albert, where he is in the lap, going by the old pit building before Cops Corner, and then one of the best parts of this race track, the sequence of corners uh, through Maggots Beckett's Chapel, uh, often imitated in places like Circuit of the Americas. It's just one of those sequences of corners that, that everyone loves, super challenging, super fun, and uh, also just, yeah, high speed, tests a car well. It's this part of the lap right here. Yeah, really tough to get it right. Got to go left, got to go right. Jump as much of the curb as you can. Alex is nailing it. Go back left, try and hit those sausages on the inside just a little bit. Slow it down while the car is unweighted. And then wind that wheel out. And we're going to see plenty of action through there. Plenty of action all around the track today. I'm thinking with 32, 33 cars on the grid by my count. Um, I'm, I'm thinking we'll see... Uh, We'll see uh, battles up and down the grid and uh, maybe battles with the track as well because, uh, you know, it's Britain. It's looking a little overcast, right? It is. We'll keep an eye on the track, but also an eye on the skies. And if there's a particular driver or team or teammates or friends you want to keep an eye on, hjbc.live has live timing right now. You can see the qualifying order. You can see that that's going to be no improvement from Alex Albert after he really strikes the curb in the final sector. Oof. But you can also see pit stop times, all of that sort of stuff. As we go, hjbc.live. The gaps, the intervals, who's driving, all of that. At the moment, with just a couple of minutes left in this qualifying session, Paul Darling, Cameron Martineau, Sean Roberts, Jordan Butler, and Christian Peeler is the top five oh rob craig there early in the lap having a little bit of a slide not for any moisture down on the track though mind you 
Yeah, just uh, just the usual kind of slide. These uh, these GR eight sixes are, are kind of an interesting beast to drive uh, in the sim. We're joining uh, Jared Collins. He's uh, currently Collins rather. He's, he's running sixth place uh, in the session. The eight the sixes, they're uh, you know they're your classic momentum, underpowered car, all that, but. They're also very modern, so you got the traction control, and you gotta you gotta really manage the car through the corners. You can't let it slip too much, otherwise the traction control is gonna kick in. It's gonna cause you some issues. So really, a car that not only values momentum driving, but also super duper smooth driving. And so we're seeing the drivers uh, struggle with that here and there, whether it's uh, getting the car too sideways and having that traction control spin you out, or or not getting enough angle in the car and, and having a hard time understeering off the track. So while he's the top of qualifying right now, Paul Darling is not on the track, perhaps making his final preparations for the one hour race. There's not a whole lot of lap time improvement from the rest of the drivers inside of the top 10. We look to Andy Kosick, perhaps this race's poster boy. <laughs> um, not in any metaphorical sense, just literally that his car was on the poster. Uh, and there. <laughs> We have him negotiating the end of the lap here and you see there are some very large red curbs there in Vale and Club. Wearing what I'm going to call his iconic uh, minty livery in that vehicle. Yeah, minty fresh. That lap was four seconds away from being an improvement for Andy Kosick and I think with the amount of time left in the session, he's only gonna get one more go at it. Seems true of basically everyone else. Yeah, I'm uh, looking up and down the grid and I'm seeing little improvements, you know, personal improvements sector by sector, but not seeing a ton of drivers that are really putting one together. Cameron Martineau, uh, however, has put one together. He's just crossed the line in second place. And that 224.8, for him is his fastest lap, but it's only an improvement by about seven hundredths of a second. So it's still going to keep him about five tenths behind Paul Darling, who's uh, really kind of put himself head and shoulders above the rest of the field out here. Kind of adds up. Uh, Darling uh, has listed uh, the GR86 as his favorite real world car. So I have this suspicion that he gets a lot of seat time both in the sim and in the real world behind the, the wheel of one of those. You certainly see plenty of them out there at track days, at races, just out on the road, fetching uh, shopping. This says that Martineau has just gone purple through the second sector, so I think he might be on one once again in the number 38 to close the gap to Darlin, currently top of the order. So Ian Giebler is also tracking well on a lap. Simon Fowether has started one uh, with some confidence as well. So there's still some speed to be found as the checkered flag is about to be out on this session and everyone on a lap will get to finish it. <laughs> We're in the iconic birds aren't real livery. Gotta love it. Watching Cameron Martino now as he heads through Maggots and Beckets on his way down to Chapel. You can see it's kind of tricky. You gotta always oh, gonna have a little bit of drama here on the exit that's uh that's rob craig who spun it and he's parked it right on the exit no uh, yellow flag rules in this series uh so martino won't uh, get dinged for not lifting but i bet you he had to change the uh the line a little bit there on the exit it's not what you'd ask for if you were trying to set the pole lap for sure he's still on this through stow corner at the end of the hangar straight Pit entry there before Vale. He remains on track, of course. Looking to see this lap out. Vale and Club. Track certainly a bit busy with a little bit of smoke uh, in the air for Cameron Martineau as he looks to improve on his two minutes 24.8. Holds a two minutes 24.4. And as Martineau comes to the line, it's a 224.5, an improvement, Oof. but not enough to take pole position. Big chunk out of that lead, though. Uh, what felt like a, a giant gap between him and Darling is now just a, a minor one. You can easily fix three tenths of a second with, uh, or two tenths of a second with the draft. 
Famously, this livery was just one of the first that someone threw together and put up on trading paints when the car was new to the service about a year ago. And so people who, uh, and it's cars free content. So everyone had the car at that point in time and needed to click a livery to put on it when there was only two or three options. And I think Simon Foweather and a few other drivers we know have uh, have stuck with it since. <laughs> Um, birds are government drones that charge on power lines, apparently. Checkered flag out. Everyone on a lap has the chance to complete it. There is only a few drivers out there as we wind this up. That order's correct. And I don't think it's going to change. So Paul Darling and Cameron Martineau will be the front row of the grid from Sean Roberts and Jordan Butler, Christian Peeler and Jared Collins, Kyle Robertson and Mike Young, and then Otis Adams and Colin Lounsbury, row number six. Continuing through the field, some familiar champ car names, Ian Giebler and Andy Kosick. Nope, it's jumbled itself now, hasn't it? I think the top 12 looks great. And then the graphic lost its way thereafter. So on the outside looking in at uh, Silverstone Circuit waiting to run through our, our grid order in a moment. There's the new pit building um, that we use because everyone paid for it. And uh, the drivers will use that pit lane once at a minimum during the race. This still doesn't <laughs> look right to me. Happens, but uh, at least the top ten's looking correct. We got got some. The top of ten's right. The top ten is correct, and then it's Ian Giebler, Otis Adams, Colin Lounsbury, Nick Love, Andy Kosick, Alex Albert, John Sorota, Mark Kruger, Bowie Sewan, Aaron Reed to twentieth, and uh, Tim Wire of Team Salen, Logan Senhauser of Drive Trainer Motorsports. I hope I've got that right. Maybe I've got that wrong. Albert Pearsall, Orlando Herald, Mick Fogelman, Scott Grinnell, Ray Lombardi, uh, John Nickelford, Brian Tidd, Steve Hermetz. And then the last driver with a qualifying time is Bill Salen. Stephen Schaefer and Rob Craig are around in Rob's Craig, Craig's case perhaps a little too literally during qualifying and uh, a no qualifying time 33 toyota gr86s one hour on the clock quiet pit stop and as i look to the sky i see no rain on the radar yeah uh no rain in the area but uh with this dynamic weather you know that uh that that can always change as we see the cars getting behind the, the Kirkland brand uh, pace car and lining up the uh, the uh, 33 cars that we're hoping to see out there today. Apparently the Costco at uh, Daytona Beach opened across from the Speedway. Good news for fans of um, the things that that chain of store sells and the prices that they sell them at. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if they got the poutines down there, but uh, I'll tell you, they're uh, they're pretty good up here in Canada. What would Australian Costco have in bulk and for cheap if you were going to throw some stereotypes out? Probably some kangaroo dogs, I'm thinking. Kangaroo Maybe. sausages go all right. The pace car's rolling. A beautiful-looking field of Toyota GR86s for the Champ Car iRacing Series 
the iRacing Championship of the Champ Car Endurance Series, a great way for Champ Car members to race against each other, keep their skills sharp, get some practice, a fantastic way for sim racers and aspiring racers to dip their toes into the Champ Car world, see what we're all about, make some friends, maybe make some connections, and look towards joining the Champ Car Endurance Series, which the season champion will be able to do with the prizes on offer. Again, 60 minutes on the clock. Pace car is in, green flag, ready to be waved on the front straight with Paul Darling and Cameron Martineau as the front row, absolutely chockers, heading down towards the very fast turn one, cold tires for all four wide into three wide into two wide and they might get away with it i had a significant amount of nerves and i don't know if i let on but as we kept towards the big braking zone that opens up the lap here the switch back through the double hairpins here drivers jockeying still for position not too much contact made thankfully the first two on the grid have converted that into first and second in the race while jordan butler's moved up to third mike young maybe have a look at for jumping the start a tiny bit it's gone from 10th to 5th definitely there are ways to make some position through the opening couple of corners there if you look to break deep around the outside for example but at the end of the wellington straight yet more side-by-side -side action through the field yes so far so good though clean all the way through the field one car spun it out uh, on the opening lap that was nick fogelman but he's pointed the right way now and carrying on no damage on that car and they're uh, they're all filing down they're three wide actually in the middle pack we got nick love on the outside miles brown up the inside and that's alex albert making the sandwich he drops into line now we're talking behind uh fogelman there or no brown there into the old pit wall mark kruger oh the break Yes, please. So, across the nose of one of the Salem's cars. Yeah, looks like looks like a, a little net code situation. The, the two of them made contact, and then they couldn't unmake contact once they started. Plenty of time though in this race, and if the rain comes through, as uh, the forecast suggests it might. Um, we could very well end up in a situation where we've got uh, plenty of time to be made up though, out there. I put to you that a 21% chance of rain means a 79% chance of not rain. But I don't teach maths to children. I just enjoy racing. And that's where we find ourselves heading into the Vale Corner. Plenty of positions still changing hands to the completion of the opening lap. Paul Darling still leading and behind the group third to ninth contesting position quite hotly nick love then leading uh, another group from 10th cameron martineau we saw him improve late in qualifying not enough to take pole away from paul darling but he seems to have the pace in the race here to go with paul darling yeah martineau's got uh, plenty of split uh, or plenty of practice racing in the fast splits on i racing uh, so I'm not surprised to see him uh, learning quickly out here. And I think uh, anyone who uh, gets to have him behind the wheel of their car is going to be pretty impressed once he gets out on the real world track a little bit more. Simon Foweather has been around at turn three. Does he look to go around the outside of one of the drive trainer cars? And chopping back to the apex. Some contact made and the rest of the field one way, then the other to get around. Yeah, evasive action both ways. Right, they'll clear it. Another little bit of contact in the field. We got Grinnell in 21st, uh, facing the wrong way, with a couple cars taking action. Oh, and a little more contact at the end of it all. Nothing too serious there. The second contact was actually a little worse. I think that was uh, Ray Lombardi that got caught up in it, as we see the end there. That bumper nearly getting ripped off 
got to be careful in the opening laps. It's just like your real champ car races. You know, you got a lot of traffic, a lot of different paces, even though they qualify. So uh, we'll see them uh, carrying on and making the best of it. It's a long season. Paul Darling and Cameron Martin are still leading the race, and now they're doing it with a bit of a gap. Uh, the two of them have built up two seconds back to Jordan Butler, uh, who can see them, and Mike Young, who'd have to squint, you'd say, uh, to see him up at the front. Yeah, so almost to the completion of another lap, and it's looking good for your top oh. two. If they get away from the rest, it's not looking great here in Stowe Corner. Yeah, Sean Roberts closed the door, and Kyle Robertson got caught, and another couple got caught up. I don't know what's going on out there. Oh, a rejoin gone wrong there. I guess folks would have seen that. Kyle Robertson rejoining comes across the nose of Polis Adams. A bunch of cars now hitting the pit lane, trying to clean it up. If you're going to wreck somewhere, that is the place to do it. Makes the drive back to the pit lane pretty short. <laughs> Though not without its treachery when you're missing the left front wheel. A few cars struggling to get to their their pit boxes, as it were. Cameron Reed, Otis Adams, Christian Peeler. We'll carry on, though. Uh, the top two still separated uh, by about four seconds now from fourth place, Mike Young. And Mike Young, uh, I would say, is leading Jared Colness. And that rounds out our top five. Nick Love's the driver who's been able to gain quite a few spots to this point here from a qualifying of 14th to now racing in sixth with a couple of the drive trainer guys behind. Nick Love is holding off uh, Miles Brown. Tight battle. Miles Brown was running up a little bit higher, had to take some evasive action. This is the gap first and second. It's basically nothing. And you'd have to say at this point, Martineau is well placed. Paul Darling's not going to be able to easily break away from him. Paul Darling's the one leading the way. And Martineau clearly making just a few little savings right here. Now, I don't think I'd be uh, doing my job if I didn't... Uh call out a beautiful thing when I see it. And uh, so we're going to do that. Uh, Sean Roberts is running in 16th place right now. And it's uh, it's been an unfortunate start for Mr. Roberts. But uh, he is running right in the middle of uh, a group of Canadians. Oh, no, he's not. <laughs> As they cross the line, it's going to change. Um, but there's a beautiful little group of Canadians. I think I'm counting four of them. John Sirota, 16th. Brian Tid, 17th. Uh, Hermats and Nickelford. 19th and 20th. They were all running together in a group, according to my timing screen, but once it updated, they separated a good little bit, so I don't know exactly what went on there. Anyways, we'll uh, we'll rejoin the real uh, the real contenders up at the front again, and I'll uh, I'll wait until the Canadians all line themselves up again. Uh, Paul Darling still feeling some pressure from Cameron Martineau, but I think you're right. I think Martineau's uh, trying to save fuel at this point in the race. Their lap times continue to be the best in the field, getting a little further away from Butler in third, Young in fourth. Nick Love and Miles Brown continue to battle. Brown has now got ahead of Nick Love, and Colin Lounsbury has caught them. So if I recall correctly, this is two Love Racing, two Drive Trainer Motorsport drivers in a four-way scrap here. Love looking around the outside and he's got the nose. He's gonna hope he's got the room on the exit and he gets given some room. Quality racing. Getting towards box formation, approaching the commitment point into Maggots and Beckett's. I think 
where Miles Brown is positioned is where you want to be right now. And Nick Love is trying to find somewhere to put his nose. And as we all know, Love is an open door. So he's trying all he can. A good run onto the hangar straight could definitely do something. But it's team tactics afoot here as Kyle Robertson will line up to try to bump draft his teammate. Colin Lounsbury's not close enough to get in and do the same. Slightly resembling Talladega more than Silverstone for a moment. Yeah, the cars are looking pretty unstable out there too. They're not loving the bump draft the same way the Miatas do. Uh, that's for sure. A little unsettled when they get that push. Speaking of, a little push around the outside is going to let Nick Love, I think, clear. But he gives uh, a bit of a run to Kyle Robertson on the outside before closing the door. Whew. Could have hardly put a paper between the two of them. And these folks are all battling pretty hard here, but it's coming at the expense of some lap time. Uh, a 2.28 last time by for them, uh, being significantly eclipsed by Paul Darling and Martino at front run in 24s last time by. Here they are, your leaders once again, first and second, and just a little bit of uh, assistance there from Martino along the Wellington Strait. Yeah, nicely driven. Just by them, we're seeing Mike Young uh, lapping uh, Ray Lombardi in the orange car. He's got Jaron Collins uh, close behind, trying to keep up, and uh, just out of the shot. Uh, no, in the shot ahead of him is uh, Jordan Butler. So uh, the first two spots are, are separating themselves, but uh, I have a feeling that uh, the rest of the top five is, is certainly going to be a battle. Once again, the drive trainer Love Stoush. No love for track limits, that's for sure, on the exit of Cops. Formerly turn one in the old configuration. Now halfway around the lap with the new pit building. Some side by side from the other pair of teammates in the background. And you see distinctively here how much time that loses you compared to the cars running single file. And Robertson will just hold off Lounsbury for the moment and then they all line up again down the hangar straight 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth. The pace that they're doing relative to the leaders is interesting, but it's the pace they're doing compared to Tim Wire, Sean Roberts, Ian Giebler, the group of cars behind that are catching them. It could make it very, very interesting. Yeah, if, uh, if I racing had hand gestures, I bet you the guys uh, at the back are, are starting to wave about uh, lining up because Tim Wire... Sean Roberts and co have taken a uh, better part of three, two and a half seconds out of the guys ahead. And uh, as we follow them here on the action cam, they're, uh, they're uh, still battling, but uh, doing it in a way that's not costing them much time. Sean Roberts peeking down the inside here as they come down the new start finish line into Abbey here. Doesn't the Hamilton move. straight put some respect on, on Mr. Seven time. Apologies, I forgot it's so new. I feel like it might have actually been a couple of years ago, but yeah, they, they found something around the place to uh, to name after him. Oh, there's a wobble under traction from Tim Wire, and maybe Sean Roberts decides, is it my turn to lead now? And maybe Tim Wire agrees. Now I have to see, it looks like he's holding the spot, doing a little side drafting down the straight here, as Roberts holds the preferred line into Brooklyn's. And you can really see how these cars are unstable in the corners and, and want to kind of slide out into that traction control. Oh, a little bit of contact behind him. Logan Senhauser gets punted uh, wide by Ian Giebler while trying to squeeze him down onto the apex. They were running too wide for a moment there. Let's just remind you folks, this is the, the quality battling we're seeing for the back of the, the top 15 right now. You can, uh, you can come out to the Champ Car Racing Series and race with uh, a lot of folks and have a lot of fun, I think. Uh, that's what we're seeing. Speaking of... This is the group that they're catching, the way that they're racing. Nick Love side by side with Miles Brown, Kyle Robertson, Colin Lounsbury watching on as well. 
Roman formation two by two. And that is not the fast way through a super quick change of direction sequence like this. It costs them all time through there. It costs them all time onto the hangar straight. And the gap between Lounsbury and Kyle Robertson there side by side to the next group of cars rapidly shrinking. And they're going to do it once again at the end of the straight into Stowe Corner. Big dive down the inside from Miles Brown. Nick Love going for the classic switchback. And he'll get side by side again as well. As they remain side by side behind this too. It's good stuff in the Toyota GR86. Free content on iRacing. Everyone has got it. And, and it's popular for here. this reason. Yeah, they've all showed up because it's such a good time. You might notice there uh, Colin Lounsbury backing out of it. He took a slowdown on the exit of the corner there, so he's dropped back a little bit off this group. But I have a feeling he's going to provide a nice little draft to Sean Roberts uh, and co who are trying to close this gap down as they're still too wide up at the front. And it's, uh, it's drive trainer on drive trainer as Nick Love tries to hold them both off. He is about to get mercilessly sandwiched there. Sean Roberts in the orange car behind as a reminder, qualified third. So he's working his way uh, up to where his qualifying pace might have him. And as he does that, he is still dragging Wire and Herald and those others along. The drive trainer guy has managed to link up for a little bit here, which was presumably the goal all along, but easier said than done in the heat of battle. And Nick Love doing what he does, trying to get down the inside here. <laughs> The Lounsbury fans in the chat are uh, are heckling him for the uh, the off tracks. I'd love to see it. <laughs> Onto the old pit straight we go, looking to form up a train. Sixth to fourteenth. Look at them all go, catching just a tiny bit of uh, lap traffic as they do, side by side through cops. Now the driver with the momentum is Kyle Robertson. He muscles out Nick Love. He maybe compromises his own teammate just a little bit through here as well. Yeah, they might have the same paint job on the car, but I'm, I'm not sure this is uh, this is quite the, the team operation you might expect for a race that's still got 40 minutes left in it. These guys are going at it like there's 10. Come by that beautiful sailing car. Yeah, it's Bill Salen there. And they got uh, got some Salen cars approaching. I think uh, Tim Ware wearing the Salen livery in that second group as it uh, is now official. There's a battle pack running from 6th all the way back to 14th. We actually see one mm -hmm. car peel off there. That's uh, He's got a slowdown and he's well. hitting pit entry. He's making sure to try to clear the slowdown before pit entry. And he hasn't. And Nick Love has a penalty, a black flag. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, you got to get rid of that black flag before you hit the furled black flag, before you hit the pit lane. So he's going to pay for that one at the stop. It will. It'll be, uh, it'll be quite costly. I think the decision to get out of the traffic was a good one. The decision to not clear the slowdown penalty before entering pit lane, uh, I don't think was a good one. Feels like the classic way you learn a rule at a, at a HPD. <laughs> find it out by breaking it it's gonna get spicy when sean roberts catches this group which he has done now tim y has done well to work with him orlando Harrell, ian giedler logan senhauser all in tow as well uh, and while things have calmed down there just a second uh, let's take a look forward jordan button mike young and Jared collins are uh Closing things down. They're uh, they're a little farther apart than that group behind, but I have a feeling that in just a few laps we can see these guys bumper to bumper as well. Anyway, we'll check back in with that uh, following pack, that sixth to eighth pack. I know sixth to thirteenth pack. That is uh, plenty busy. Miles Brown almost had himself a little breakaway there, but he's being pursued by his own teammate Kyle Robertson. Brown did have uh, did have some bright moments there at the start. Moved up a few spots before dropping back. Nick Love finally rejoins after serving the 
the penalty for his improper pit entry. And yep. spits him back out in 27th, just side by side with uh, Christian Peeler and Otis Adams. Yeah, Peeler, another uh, penalized victim there. He had, uh, had uh, I believe, a black flag for crossing the line on entry into the pits. And Otis Adams uh, running a nice livery there uh, in that uh, Miata, calling out Team Not a Team. Uh, of course, he races with us in the Spec 5 series uh, that we broadcast on third day, Thursday nights in a Miata. He races in a GR86 tonight, of course, but, you know, he's doing his Miata colors. A team whose normal Miata colors has some Indiana Brewery on it, though, if I recall. Yeah. It's like beer, but written in the shape of the great state of Indiana. Who are we watching now? That's the leaders, uh, Cameron Martineau, still following in the wheel tracks of Paul Darley and giving them a pretty big push. You know, with the two of them having broken away the way they have, about nine seconds back to third and fourth, I have... Uh, I had kind of the feeling that Martineau might be doing a big fuel save, you know, trying to to make the gap up in the pit lane, but not seeing a ton of evidence of that right now. Third and fourth. Mike Young gets ahead of Jordan Butler. Jared Coleman's there just out of the one second that you want to be in in such a draft heavy track as Silverstone uh, Grand Prix. Yeah, uh, Mike Young having uh, a solid out in here. He's uh, he's uh, seemed uh, seems like he's got a lot of experience. I'm, I'm reading his bio. In uh, 2008, he started eye racing on a keyboard. I have a feeling that he's upgraded the equipment a little bit since then with how fast he is out there right now. For chance, you'd think it likely. So that's third, fourth, fifth on your screen at the moment. pretty respectable laps there even even in the second place they're uh, running bottoms of the 25s last time by only a couple tenths off of our, our two meters who are running uh, 224.75s so this group still led by drive trainer motorsports now that they've calmed down some of their um their battling just for a moment uh, they all do stand a chance of catching um miles brown yeah sean roberts still working his way up through the field having passed a few drivers like wire like giebler having passed colin lounsbury now next up on kyle robertson yeah, if you're Lounsbury, you're trying your hardest to get up on the rear bumper of Roberts there because um, you'd, you'd like to, to follow the fast car by the guys ahead. Those drive trainer guys have kind of managed to break away a little bit, though. Not afraid of the Ryobi uh, livery behind them, apparently. Similar style between, uh, between the two, even though the color scheme is pretty different. Robert starting to line it up was the fourth fastest car on track last lap behind the leaders first and second and Tim Wire. Mike Young is Sorry, under a little bit of pressure here. He's getting uh, Jordan Butler with a big run behind him. And, of course, Butler decides now that the camera's on him, he's going to dive in behind rather than uh, taking the inside line. Two of them combined, though, are just managing to keep Collins out of the draft. 
And if uh, they don't start battling, I have to think that uh, have to think that Collins is uh, going to have a hard time catching him. So that's 10 laps completed at this point by your leaders, also by this group third and fourth. And everyone else crossing the start finish line right now. Colin Lounsbury pits. Interesting, interesting call there. It's a pretty quick pit road, at all things considered. You do get to cut out the Vail Club series of corners there. And then pit road speed is 50 miles an hour. So the Delta's not all that significant and Andy Kosick is also coming in yeah the uh, the forecast looking pretty clear at this point too 10% uh, chance of rain in 15 minutes so uh, I have a feeling we'll be pretty pretty dry race Sean Roberts is back to putting pressure on uh, Miles Brown and Kyle Robertson he was on the outside as they went through uh, Abbey and then backed out of it. We'll see if he has something else to say down the Wellington Strait here. All happening, approaching more pit stops because Scott Grinnell, Brian Tidd, Steve Hermetz, they also all pitted. I wonder if we're about to have a little more of a rush on the lane. Some drivers changing tyres, some drivers not changing tyres, but critically, as I look, by all accounts, everyone remains on the Continental slick tyres. <laughs> the sun is out. You can see the shadows. You can look into the sky. I, well, there's a chance of rain. I think there's always a chance of rain in old Blighty. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, a lot of folks learned some lessons during the practice race uh, last week. Uh, of course, we were on run one the week before and uh, learned a little bit about how the air racing forecasting system works. Realistic weather today, so hopefully it's not raining over Silverstone. Cameron Martineau now leads Paul Darling and leads him to pit lane. This is that, that pit entry, so it's so quick here. And then braking to 50 miles an hour, Grand Prix pit lane speed. And then yeah, make a little turn, look for your crew. Your crew are always, the pit boxes are always ordered in qualifying order. So the pole sitter will be right down by pit exit. And then around and around and around everyone else coming through so this is your top four but oh not your... martino runs deep and has to hit reverse he does it pretty quickly but uh that's going to cost him some crucial seconds there on the lane so it's very few drivers who do stay out jared coleman's one of them orlando herald not surprising me that much but he's staying out and there you have Cameron Martineau leading Paul Darling off the lane and by more than a second here, by a decent amount. A lot of other drivers coming through pit lane as well. It's been very, very busy there. So Jared Collins leads from Orlando Herald. Cameron Martineau goes out into third place, but net race leader as he's made his pit stop and taken on board 20 seconds of fuel. Paul Darling's taken on board 22. That kind of matches with what we saw out of the first 20 minutes or so of Darling leading and Martineau sitting and saving a little. Yeah, it uh, it does, but also uh, aided by uh, Martineau's little mistake there in the pit lane. Uh, sorry, Darling's little mistake in the pit lane there where he uh, would have got it a little deep. Or no, actually, am I getting that backwards? I don't know, I couldn't see. <laughs> and uh, that's one of the criticisms of the new pit lane here. Uh, normally, pit garages for Formula One follow the you know, previous year's championship order, but they shuffle them around here at Silverstone because that garage at the pit exit, you can't see them. And the fans, they come here, they want to see Mercedes, they want to see Red Bull. So they put some of the less popular teams down that end of the lane and put the, the big teams somewhere in the middle where the fans can see them. You got to make sure uh, everyone's happy when they're paying for the tickets. We're getting and that boy, today. do they pay for their tickets. <laughs> I hear that. So uh, the pit stops have shaken things all up, but uh, the battles, uh, the battles, they stay the same. Uh, Kyle Robertson is uh, trying to chase down Miles Brown, though the two of them are now following Tim Wire. 
and Ian Keebler. We're left with just three drivers who haven't stopped, Jared Collins, Orlando Herrell and Albert Pearsall. We are left with just two drivers that haven't stopped. <laughs> Wait 15 seconds, I can say we're left with just the one. Yeah, sure enough, Orlando Harrell coming to the lane, and usually Orlando Harrell's our canary in the coal mine on uh, how long can you go on fuel. So if that yellow car is hitting the lane, it's, uh, it's a sure thing. You need to pit. He's in one of the pit stalls we can uh, get a good look at. So almost everyone through the lane. It means Cameron Martineau is through to the race lead. 3.7 seconds on Paul Darling. The race is on here. 30 minutes completed. 30 minutes to go for Champ Car iRacing Series 2024's fourth round from Silverstone. And we really have a fight on our hands. Can Cameron Martineau maintain that gap, keep the lead, or can Paul Darling, the pole sitter, chase him down in the back half? Yeah, it'll be uh, qualifying laps from here to the end, you got to think. We'll see uh, who's got the best of it. Second group, uh, Rob Craig in the foreground, a lap down with Jordan Butler and Mike Young following. Jordan Butler in the red and black DNA livery car there had a pretty good pit stop. Uh, one of the shortest ones actually that we've seen, 19.6 seconds stationary. And uh, Might not be DNA, it could be any double helix. Maybe he's a big fan of medieval castle staircases. I accept the premise, but doubt it. <laughs> Elaborate children's play equipment? <laughs> Either way, uh, he continues on. I'm just teaching DNA right now in class. That's why it's in the brain. Do you know what DNA stands for, David Haynes? Uh. Oh, do you know, do you know, uh, uh, ribbon nucleic acid. You got the last, the last couple ones, and I really applaud our producer for waiting to chime in there until after Haynes got to struggle on air. <laughs> it's team effort here at HJBC. One of the battles I've been uh, watching a little bit is this one uh, in 12th place. Uh, Aaron Reed, Logan Sennhauser uh, have just swapped positions, actually. Um, and the two of them, I, I really like that Asashi livery that, uh, that uh, Sennhauser's wearing there. And they're defending off a familiar face. This is Colin Lounsbury, um, who, uh, having taken a, a slightly longer pit stop, has found himself now back a little bit in the pack battling and hoping to make a move up the inside here. Gets a little bit of room, I think, from Logan Sennhauser on the outside. And might get a little bit more help here because uh, Aaron Reed was so wide out there. I wonder if he clipped the slowdown area. We'll see on the next straightaway. No, they look all clear and Bo Suen catches this group as well as Orlando Herald's right underneath the bumper of Logan Sennhauser. Uh, Sennhauser, Harrell, and Reed all have a pretty good race. It's more than 10 positions gained for each of them. The winner of the positions gained battle so far, though, is actually Tim Wire, just a few spots up the road in seventh place. Wire narrowly fending off Miles Brown here as they head down uh, that uh, Wellington Street. Miles Brown looking to the inside using that draft, that side draft and breaking a little bit later. I think he's got him on the way in oh, with a little bit of action ahead of him. That's a car spinning off the track. Ian Giebler might be off. Yeah, he was. So for position ahead of them, Ian Giebler has spun out, lost a handful. Does he get a bit of the, is he already got a bit of a slide on then he gets too much apex curb? Yeah, I think a little bit of column A, column B, and he might have been even uh, assisted around by that traction control kicking in because it's hard to save the car uh, once the, the traction control is stopping you from putting the foot to the floor. Three wide now, down the front straight. Lounsbury's up the inside, makes the smart decision and decides to back up. 
Keep is going to try and carry more speed and make up some of that ground he's just lost. Oh, it's on here for sure. Aaron Reed going to lead them through, then Lounsbury, then Ian Gabler. Looks like Sennhauser had a, a, an optimistic look, had to get on the brakes, and he's shuffled to the back of this group. Now out onto the hangar straight. High speed through Chapel Curve means you're at full throttle early, carrying a lot of speed, pushing a lot of air. Slipstream super, super powerful. And Gabler will sit behind. Lounsbury as Lounsbury looks to go down the inside of Stowe Corner and Aaron Reed pushes out just a little bit wide. Aaron Reed stays on the track and they will remain side by side, except with Reed having the inside to Vale. Oh, Vale, so tight that we got the Milwaukee on Ryobi battle playing itself out. And Ryobi's going to get the upper hand for now. We'll see how long that holds. <laughs> Reed's got the run, and let's see what Laney decides. He peeks to the inside. There's not a lot of overlap here, though. Oh, and I think he lifted just a little bit to give some racing room. Is that a summit car behind him, too? Gee whiz. We got uh, all the, the necessary tools for racing out here. Sure are a lot of tools in racing, that's for sure. <laughs> Lounsbury, Reed, Gievler. Lounsbury and Reed both ran super wide through the first uh, hairpin there in the uh, village complex. Let's the rest of them stay close. So we continue racing though. HABC.live has the live timing. So if you're trying to watch a particular battle uh, or keep track of your teammates, that's the place to look. Otherwise, you can uh, you can continue to see the ongoing battle of the power tools. <laughs> Milwaukee are briefly ahead before uh, Colin Lounsbury strikes back. Just shares a little bit of green paint as well. Martino's lead now five seconds at the at the race lead. Very patient in the first half of the race, and now after the pit stops, really put his foot down. It's a tiny bit wide from Reed, and now Ian Giebel is up alongside. Ooh, and they're holding real close together through the corners there. Wow, it was close. Giebler sliding a little bit as he went over the, the sausage curbs. Might have had a bit of a flashback. And he'll give that spot up to Reed, but not, uh, not without a fight. Don't look now. Orlando Harrell's got a bit of a run in that yellow car. Yeah, all of them running middle of the road down the hangar straight, just following Mother Duck Colin Lounsbury over the hills and far away. But hopefully all of them um, come back. For those of you wondering about the front of the field, it's uh, it's uh, maybe what they'd call a chess mass. Cameron, Cameron Martineau has uh, got a 4.6 4.6 second lead. Oh, we're going to have a look at Tim yeah. Wire. Oh, just trying to avoid uh, causing a spin. He gets it wrong and spins himself. But yeah, checking in on the top five, it's pretty quiet. Uh, the uh, Cameron Martineau, Paul Darling battle is uh, down to the hundredths of a second uh, average over the last five laps. They're only two hundredths of a second apart. Jordan Butler, uh, Mike Young, and Jared Collins are also uh, in a bit of a long distance battle about uh, two seconds, four seconds separating Butler and Young, and then about uh, 13 seconds separating uh, Mike Young and Collins. Uh, Butler and Young, about four tenths of a second between their averages over the last few laps. So things are, are cooling off on the front of the field, even though they're staying real busy uh, a little bit deeper here in the field. Bit of space for Miles Brown and Kyle Robertson after they dropped Lounsbury through the pit stops. They dropped Nick Love when he had a penalty. So now they run uh, a sixth and seventh with a little bit less to worry about. Saw some pictures. They had their first Champ Car Endurance Series race uh, just recently at Daytona. So, uh, 
if you saw them around or if you see them around again say hi yeah and uh you know the drive trainer guys uh have uh have lots of fun i think learning their way around the real cars as well as the, the things they want so tim why is getting away from uh, sliding uh, back to him i think yeah yeah the power tool battle and the power tool battle continues that was aaron reed going around the outside of colin lounsbury into uh into stow there Lounsbury has to tap the brakes on the exit because he's running it wide. And that is another drive trainer. Oh, off to the side there. Who's that? That's Aaron, Aaron Reed with the curb at Vale getting a little sideways and then maybe checking up and being helped around further from his sideways. Started when he took too much of the apex curb and around he goes. Colin Lounsbury. Ian Giebler, Orlando Herald going through Bowie Sewan and Logan Senhauser likewise as well. You wanted your Canadians, so Nickelford and Tid for 24th and 25th are closing up. Yeah, I've actually been watching them a little bit off and on. They're uh, they're having some fun back there, I think. Uh, good little bit of battling. They uh, they've gone back and forth a few times, and it looks like we're jumping back to Orlando Harrell here, who's uh, suddenly found himself ahead of uh, Ian Giebler as. As something shook and things up there. Yeah, Gable dropping back might have cut the track a tiny bit somewhere. Yeah. Has Bowie Sue in to his outside here? You know what, I've gone back and checked, and that was actually just a clean move from Orlando Harrell. He uh, got the inside, got a little bit of draft, and uh, took the spot away from me and Giebler, so let's not shortchange him. Suen's kind of hanging around the back of those pictures. He's been uh, lurking and slower to closing things down. With the battle ahead of him, he was able to make up some lap time, and now he's right on the back of Ian Giebler. Another one of those drive trainer cars, at least by the looks of things. Yeah, sure enough. Good showing from the drive trainer boys today. Well, they always show up in numbers. Yeah. And they're, they're putting up some decent numbers at the moment in this race with 6th, 7th, 12th. We might have had another car somewhere. So we're watching, uh, this is some suing, trying to make a move on Giebler. Colin Lounsbury running way wide, slowing down. I think literally with a slowdown. Yep, and it's still there. And it's gone. Oh, Giebler's going to make the move up the inside, though. That was one of those closing wedges, though. He got a little bit lucky to get away with that one. Pulling on the inside as Suen tries to make the move around the outside. And Suen's getting some draft help from Lounsbury up ahead. Not really make it work. Running the wide line to hold the inside on the right hander. When it switches back, you got the lead. And sure enough, he does, but hey, the over-under's on again, and Ian Giebler's now looking up the inside. Wipers on for <laughs> Giebler. Sun still out. Not a hint of rain anywhere on the radar, and he lifts out on the way into Cops. Bowie Suen goes from around the outside and stays ahead. Spreading just a little bit 
in this group as Tim Wire finds his footing again, remains ahead. Orlando Herrell breaking free just a tiny bit from Lounsbury, Sue and Giebler battling. Sean Roberts and Jean Sirota are real close together on track right now. That's 16th place, uh, 15th, 16th. Oh, and actually really, really close was Jean Sirota there. He, uh, I think they tap bumpers and they're right behind Rob Craig too. Oh no, what's going on there? Uh, I don't know, I don't know what that was. I'll have to take a look at that one after the race. I think uh, bump shaft gone bad. It wasn't very Canadian to Jean Sirota, though. Let's see if that car gets to the pit entry and the pit lane and gets back out there. Mounds, Bruce, and so Logan Senhauser has been catching this battle. He was part of it, and then he he had a mistake or a little error that took him away from it. Now the uh, Karakuchi Taste of Japan is on its way back. <laughs> I should get a little bit more of that down, down the, on the bottom side of the world there. Ooh, bit more curb than Bowie Suen would have wanted. It's maybe going to cost him a spot there. You've got those black and white curbs that almost mean nothing, do nothing, but there are a few red curbs around the place here that just are no good for a Toyota GR86. Yeah, and it's a little deceptive because uh, you can catch the edges of them and you won't get uh, too upset, but you go over the middle of them and all of a sudden the car starts bouncing and jumping and it, uh, it's a bad time. Paul Darling has a new fastest lap of the race, and with that, he slims the lead from five seconds where it was, uh, closer to four. So if Martino still needs to do a little bit of saving, they could be on there. But we're on here with Lounsbury, with Giebler down the inside, with Bowie Suen looking to follow through if possible. Side by side through Stowe, around the outside works better than you think here because there's just a little bit of, of anti-camber and it keeps Lounsbury in this fight and he gets back ahead. Yeah, Lounsbury's doing a good job of uh, sort of staying at the front of that pack but it's really hard to break away uh, with these cars on this track you know so much straight away so much open throttle time and the draft really adds up. Come Senhauser, breaking early. He had a bit of a run with a chance. It's a slide from Colin Lounsbury. Puts him on a very shallow line into the left-hander here where traction on the exit is critical to the Wellington straight. I think he got a little a little tap there from Ian Giebler in the braking zone. Giebler was really, really close to him. And that, uh, that sent them sliding. This battle doesn't look like it's going to get settled uh, before the end of the race. 12 minutes to go, just under that. Another half a second taken out of Cameron Martineau, the race leader as well. And he did so take a slightly shorter stop than Darley. There is just a tiny bit of traffic going on as well that could be playing into it. You're looking at Martineau, qualified second race leader after the pit stops he was race leader just briefly before the pit stop um as well but it was the exit of the pits for martino where he really uh hit his stride with an almost five second race lead 
and Paul Darling in second. One car that's having uh, maybe the quietest race of everyone out there is Andrew Kosick in 14th place. Got that high visitor. A bit of shameless car. fan service, do you, Devin? Yeah, and I, I don't think Fair enough. Uh, I don't think he's seen another car in uh, in a solid 15 minutes. Maybe in his rearview mirror. Started 15th, running 14th, and uh, plugging laps away. Hasn't had to make an overtake in a while, though. No, so are... 10 minutes to go. 50 minutes of racing complete. And the best battle on track is for 10th place. Lounsbury, Giebler, Boisu, and Logan Sennhauser looking to get back into the fight. He was shaping some moves on Boisu, but wasn't successful. Now he might... Uh, do the same again this lap. Yeah, they've uh, they've spread out a little bit since the last time we looked at them, but uh, never a, never a dull moment with that crew. The other battle that I'm keeping an eye on is the one between the drive trainer guys, Miles Brown and uh, Kyle Robertson are, are getting pretty close together on track. Only a few tenths of a second separating them. Last time by, Miles Brown was uh, almost seven tenths of a second faster. Uh, in in the chase position, so we'll see if he's able to uh, with the yellow stripe car there, Miles. Uh, Drama between Lounsbury and Gabler. Lounsbury's had a spin, been T-boned by Ian Gabler at the end of the Wellington straight. Just begins as a mistake from Lounsbury, and Gabler lacks the time to respond. This is the replay, oh. and yeah, sure enough, gets that slide on that you can't catch, and then gets T-boned. Keebler has to back up to let him free. And now Andrew Kosick has some people to race with. Which granted. Can you try <laughs> to like manifest some other stuff? I'll work on it. I'll work on it. So checking in on our leader, Paul Martin, though. <laughs> Cameron Martin, though. <laughs> now he's still uh, about 3.7 seconds now. Last time by, Martino found another few tenths. And uh, Darling had to spend a few getting by uh, some lap traffic there. That was Brian Tidd. He was coming by. Handsome gap that those two have over third place. Jordan Butler, though, has worked eight seconds clear of Mike Young, who's 11 seconds clear of Jared Coleman's for yeah. fifth place yeah it's been a really honest uh, kind of workman like drive there from Jordan Butler just uh, gradually putting s space between himself uh, and Mike Young locking down like, that podium like the graphic says Kyle Robertson lost 10 seconds on the last lap with a spin so now Tim Wire senses an opportunity perhaps yeah Driving there's Orlando Herald as well uh, the two of them would love to make some more spots. Uh, Tim Wire, 13 spots gained since the start. Orlando Harrell, 15. Going for the hard charger awards, those two. Sometimes consistency and uh, wreck avoidance is the name of the game. All the time in the real world. And here's Andy Kosick's newfound company between Colin Lounsbury and Ian Gabler. Gotta imagine that's a little bit of an uncomfortable place to be at this point. Maybe some uh, some bad blood between those two. Though it was a pretty uh, accidental looking incident between them. Kosick's getting feisty though, getting close to the rear bumper of Lounsbury. Ooh. I heard it too. Yeah, you can take a little strafe on the Alco there. Making sure he gets every uh, every hundredth out of the track. And you won't find Lounsbury taking an unnecessarily wide line. 
seems like. <laughs> Carrying a lot of speed in here, but you see the brake pedal comes on and off with the changes of direction. Tightening up a little bit till here in Chapel Corner, it then opens up on the exit. The Giebler seems to have done a good job of it. Kind of one of those classic sets of corners where you get, uh, you know, just uh, got to balance the car, keep it on the nose time getting you know almost turn the car with the, the brake pedal as much as the wheel and haven't seen anyone have to take an unscheduled stop yet but we are getting down to the, the point in the race here so if anyone's fuel numbers are wrong well, this is where it might show up Uh, sounds of things though, these three are all uh, racing more or less flat out. And here, a look to the inside from Giebler, not close enough. Ooh. Lounsbury runs it wide again. Must not be a slowdown there. But that was uh, that was pretty wide. Give those racers a little bit extra racetrack, and also they go and use it. Kyle Robertson is now in the sights of Tim Wire for uh, seventh place. Oh, as we see a move up the inside here by Cossack. Look away from the battle for one second. All of a sudden, Cossack almost had a run up the inside. Logan Sennhauser behind Bowie Suen for 10th. Yeah. It's looking like two more laps to go based on the time. Yeah, we'll have to make sure that we uh, check uh, the white flag. <laughs> oh, we'll have our eyes peeled for it, no doubt. Up the inside. is getting alongside Andy Kosick on the way into some of the fastest corners on the racetrack. Indeed, some of the fastest corners anywhere. Kosick won't give up on it. And... Oh, he holds the exit. Sure does. Great thing to see in the mirrors if you're Colin Lounsbury. Yeah, he's got some breathing room now. To the tune of about a second. A second and a half, maybe. And that's wide enough for a slowdown from Andy Kosick. And that'll, uh, that'll definitely slow this battle down if he has to serve that. And he does. So Ian Giebler goes through into 13th place. Carl Robertson has Tim Wire closing. Orlando Herald's pace slumped just a tiny bit on the previous lap. Not as close to Tim Wire as he once was. Yeah, that, uh, that yellow, red, and black car, Salem's car, has been. Uh... Oh, sorry. We got uh, Sennhauser and Suen on the screen here. And uh, Silverstone delivering that kind of famously close, uh, close. Tim Wire dropping back. Orlando Harrell's got ahead. What has happened for Tim Wire? We'll take a look at Cops Corner. I'm not entirely sure. He, That's all uh, good. He comes off and then he has to give a real big slowdown back, so... Did he have a slowdown from one of the previous turns that he hadn't gotten rid of, perhaps? Or has he got a problem? Because it still looks like he's going slowly. 
Yeah, I'm wondering if he's suddenly low on fuel, because uh, I'm not seeing that. I wouldn't break on the exit of a corner if I was low on fuel. I'd do that if I had a a, a hardware problem or... Yeah, actually, that makes more sense, because uh, looking at it now, it looks like things have cleared up. Maybe a, a pop-up on the screen or something like that. That'll get you shook up. Logan Sennhauser now, right on the rear bumper of Boy Suen. And they're coming around for the final lap here. And you remember when Ian Gabler got ahead of Andy Kosick because Andy Kosick had a slowdown penalty. Well, now Ian Gabler has a slowdown penalty and Andy Kosick will get closer. It's half a lap for Cameron Martineau to see this one out. Goes past the old tit straight. And we're expecting the checkered flag. Sennhauser and Suen have come together. Both carry on. And that looks like it was on the outside of turn one. Yeah, Sen Senhauser comes up the inside here and uh, figures he's clear to the exit, but not quite. And comes right across the nose of Bowie Suen. Not much place for Suen to go there. And the two of them carry on. Here's the race leader, Cameron Martineau. Now seven seconds clear of Paul Darling. Darling had a little um, bobble with the traffic. Martineau hasn't. And so he now leads seven seconds after they were inseparable in the first half of the race. He's going to come through the final corners of Vale and Club. And as the Champ Car iRacing Series comes to Silverstone Circuit, Cameron Martineau is the winner. Paul Darling will come around the final corners in second. Where's the checkered flag, man? They're acting like it's out. Yeah, he's holding it. I just don't think he's waving it. But yeah, that's uh, that's the end. Jordan Butler comes across in third. That car doesn't have a ton of fuel in it. Mike Young crosses the line in fourth, closely followed by... Uh, Oh, not closely. And he's got about 13 seconds back to Jared Collins, who will come across in fifth. Miles Brown and Kyle Robertson separated at the end by a little bit more time. Miles Brown crossed the line about six seconds ahead of his friend and teammate, Kyle Robertson. Next up, we got Orlando Harrell, hard charge of the race, up 16 spots, and crosses the line. Another driver trainer car coming to the line, Bowie Suen, for ninth, and he's going to just hold off Tim Wire. Those two have been uh, racing pretty good. Logan Sennhauser behind the two of them, so Wire managed to sneak between Sennhauser after that incident earlier on. Colin Lonsbury rolling down the pit lane, as is Ian Keebler, and Andy Kosick uh, across the line in 14th. 15th for Christian Peeler after that unfortunate pit stop. Johns Rota 16th. Nick Love 17th. Aaron Reed 18. Mark Kruger 19th. Scott Grinnell 20th. And Simon Fullweather 21st. And uh, that is the end of the Champ Car iRacing series. Cameron uh, Martineau takes the win from Paul Darling and Jordan Butler as our top three. Mike Young, Jared Collins, Miles Brown, Kyle Robertson, Orlando Harrell, Bowie Suen, and Tim Wire as the top ten. Then. As we see and have read out Logan Sennhauser, Colin Lounsbury, Andy Kosick, Christian Peeler, John Sirota, Nick Love, Aaron Reed, Mark Kruger, Scott Grinnell, and Simon Foweather as the top 20. Then Ian Giebler, 21st. He didn't take a slowdown penalty or something else into the pit lane on the final lap there did he he was he was like 13th 
but now he's 21st as the scoring has been completed. Steve Hermetz, Brian Tidd, Ray Lombardi, John Nicholson, Stephen Schaefer, Albert Pearsall, Bill Salen, Rob Craig, Nick Fogelman, Sean Roberts, Alex Albert, and Otis Adams, the 33 drivers from the Champ Car iRacing Series Round 4 at Silverstone. And uh, that wraps it up. Let's see uh, if we've got any of our uh, any of our finishers available. I'm not seeing too many guys hanging around the discard today. But if Cameron Martin or Paul Darling or Jordan Butler are in the, in the voice chat, they're uh, more than welcome to come and join us for an interview. And that wraps up round four of uh, the Champ Car I Racing Series. And who am I seeing? I am seeing a Jordan Butler. So Jordan, third place uh, and a pretty solid race for yourself. It looked like you, Mike Young, and Jared Collins were going to have a, uh, a battle there, but uh, you managed to come out on top. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I got a good start, and me and uh, Mike Young were battling pretty good right before the pit stops. And uh, I think I might have taken just some less fuel than he did, so I uh, pulled out a gap. And uh, funny enough, when I was following him, I actually learned a couple things, and uh, I kind of used some of his lines to to break a gap on him after the pit stops. So uh, thanks, Mike, for showing me the way. And uh, yeah, it was a good podium for me. Oh, it looked like it, uh, and uh, it looked like it was, uh, yeah, it looked like it was a pretty heated battle there for a minute, but uh, you had the, the upper hand. Uh, a solid finish for you, too. I'm, I'm trying to scroll back through our point screen here and not see it, but I, I, think, uh, I think this might be a, a high point for you. Yeah, I missed a couple rounds. Um, I had a good race going at Spa, but uh, ended up crashing out, so I didn't really have too good of a result. And then uh, I missed the last couple of races here, so... This is my uh, return back to the series here. Well, it's good to have you back. And with four uh, drop weeks, you still get a chance at that uh, that big old prize. And of course, if uh, if you can make four in a row, then uh, you got uh, yourself an entry in the in the uh, the draws. Um, it says here that you've uh, done some racing with uh, level one racing, hoping to get back out there this season. Uh, yeah, yeah, we just uh, finished up our race at Daytona, and. Um, brand new engine because it uh grenaded itself at sebring so brand new engine for daytona really untested and it lasted all 14 hours and uh car ran great uh pit stops are perfect and uh ended up getting second in class at daytona so uh that was a really big result for the team uh, now you can tell all the guys this you know you got a fast driver right you know podium in the champ car series and podium at daytona I know. I just do strategy for those guys, so they uh, they better look at the results and put me in the car. <laughs> well, good to have you out, and, and a good race for you there. Yeah, thank you very much. Haynes, they're they're trickling in. I think uh, we've got uh, Paul Darling in here as well. Paul. Uh, Look like you and Cameron Martineau were going to have uh, a real tight race there, and then it uh, kind of seemed to go all wrong at the pit stop. Uh, yeah, I, I was hoping we were going to have a really fun time at the second half there, because, I mean, both of us, I think, are pretty experienced. I actually forgot that Cameron is racing in a similar series that I am. That's why our uh, n number plates were similar. Um, so we've got both got a lot of experience in this car. It was going to be good. And then overshot the pit stall, got myself a slowdown, lost another two seconds, and then I knew there was no way I was going to catch him from that far back with how similar our pace was. So it's kind of a big letdown, to be honest. Well, you were you were definitely pushing him at the end. I was watching the battle. At, we we get the five lap averages up here in the timing booth, and there was like like a, a ten lap point where you folks were like two hundredths of a second apart on average over that whole stint. But yeah, uh, I was pushing a lot, but just couldn't make out couldn't make up what I shot myself in the face with. <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. I think uh, you got the answer to your question though. Uh you weren't sure who the, the rival was gonna be and uh Cameron Martino looks to be uh looks to be a rival for you. Yeah, hope he keeps coming back so uh, we can have some good racing. <laughs> Uh, looking forward to any uh, real-world champ car races this year? 
Uh, not this year, but I'm hoping to get into it next year. In the meantime, race with that uh, other competing uh, Grid Life series by the sounds of things? Yeah, yeah, I do race in Grid Life and GLTC. Um, but yeah, haven't done much endurance personally, but I definitely want to get into that in the future. Well, looking forward to having you out at the next one. And uh, anyone you need to shout out for tonight's race? No, I'll, I'll just shout out Cameron because uh, that was going to be a good race. We both had excellent pace. Um, so hopefully he keeps coming back. See you at the next one. Thank you. And there's one last driver on the podium to speak to, and it's race winner Cameron Martineau. Congratulations. Hey, thanks, David. Yeah, it was, uh, that was a blast. That was a, that was a tense, uh, tense race <laughs> on my end. <clears throat> the whole first 30 minutes of the race, we're watching your front bumper right underneath Paul Darling's rear wing, thinking... He's trying to play a, a longish game here, and in the end, it, it seems like the way to go, the quick pit stop, break away through the pit lane, and then and then maintain that gap when otherwise, you know, the pace between you two guys was was pretty similar. Yeah, that that's exactly what I was trying to do. I mean, we Paul and I were only a tenth and a half off in qualifying, with uh, with this being such a low power car and with so many long straights at silverstone i mean there's really no reason to um to fight that early on um especially because it'll just hurt both of our races um of course it's definitely more more entertaining for the broadcast but (laughs) in terms of strategy yeah that's exactly what i was trying to do so try to just save tires um save fuel and and hope that i could jump him in the pits and and create enough of a gap and um that's that's pretty much exactly what happened and yeah it was it was definitely i I definitely wanted to there was a few times that i thought about you know putting sticking a nose in there but thought against it just to kind of probe and see you know what he would do in certain situations but paul is extremely quick and extremely consistent driver it was just a shame at the end there we he was he was catching me a little bit, so I'm, I'm sure if he had caught up to me, we would have had a good fight for the last few laps. We're looking at it. Can you talk us through uh, what's going on with the paint scheme? Oh, uh, what do you in what what regards? I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's blue and green, and what's it doing? Yeah, so um, it's uh, actually. If you guys have ever seen the um, Samantha Tan Racing BMW, it's pretty much that livery uh, put on a GR86. <laughs> so, okay, a bit, of, um, a bit of ST racing. Okay. Because yep. uh, it was triggering something, and there was something in the back of my brain. Uh, okay. There you go. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, it's, it's, done, it's done well for you and done and proud. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm sure if uh, Samantha was watching tonight, she, uh, she would have been happy with uh, the performance. <laughs> Be nice. Congrats. A race win. Good haul of points. Lots more racing to come this year in the Champ Car iRacing series. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. And thank you guys uh, for putting this on. It's, uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. Well done. We, uh, we look forward to seeing you. Here we go. Cameron Martineau, race winner. Also hearing from Paul Darling and Jordan Butler. Devin, our next major event in Champ Car iRacing Series is a big one at Watkins Glen. Yeah, Watkins Glen, always a good time. You know, classic track, classic of American racing, uh, and going to be a good time to see the uh, see the uh, the GT4 class making its uh, first appearance in the Champ Car Series. Of course, while we portion the BMWs out, and more than a few guys that have indicated that uh, those will be their favorites. Yep, another great opportunity to go racing in the Champ Car iRacing series. Make some connections, make some friends, keep your skills sharp, and also have a great chance of winning some prizes that put you one step closer to getting racing wheel-to-wheel in real endurance racing in the Champ Car Endurance series. That's what it's all about in the Champ Car iRacing series. 
bringing everyone together, creating a step that can help aspiring racers get to know Champ Car and also put on some great racing. I've been David Haynes, Devin Peters and Michael Derby. Wherever you've been watching, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the show. Hope the drivers enjoyed the racing. Forum.champcar.org for the schedule, for all the information. Never too late to join us. In fact, now is a great chance to join us from next round, round five through to round eight. Everyone who races goes into the draw to win prizes. We look forward to seeing you then.